guys, Jared here, and today we're going to be taking a look at a framework that I found online uh, that just makes your text fields a little bit cooler. So let's just go ahead and jump right into it. All right, so first off, credit where credit's due. This is Raul Riera, and he is the creator of this. So you can just go over to his profile page, click on text field effects, and this is what we're going to be using inside of our own project. But anyway, these are the different text fields that you can do. So as you can see, we have Kaide, Hoshi, all these different kinds of text fields that you can implement into your own app. And they're all fairly smooth looking. So what we're going to do is go ahead and apply this into our project. And the whole process is very simple. So the way that we apply these effects to our project, we can either use CocoaPods or Carthage. I prefer CocoaPods, so I'm going to go ahead and go this route. And if you have no idea what either of these are, head over to CocoaPods.org, a link in the description down below, and you'll be able to figure this out pretty easily. But for those who already have it installed, let's go ahead and get started into our own Xcode project. So here we are in Xcode. Go ahead, create a new Xcode project. I'm just going to go ahead and make this a single view application, click next. And for the project name, I'm just going to go to call this text field, uh, language, Swift, devices, universal. Go ahead, click next and create. And now that we have this created, we're going to go ahead and jump into terminal now. And we're going to access this project via terminal to install our pod correctly. So the way that we do this is say ls um, cd desktop cd text field ls and then now that you can see that we have our text field xcode project uh, you want to make sure that that file is in there you can now go ahead and say pod in it and now if you were to look into your project files over here on your desktop which is where I have my project files, you'll be able to see that this pod file has been added. Now inside of this pod file here, this is where you're gonna add the pod that you want to install. So right where it has hashtag pods per text field, you're gonna go ahead and delete that and you're gonna replace it with this CocoaPod right here. So go ahead and copy that and just paste that right in there. Now go ahead and hit Command S to save that document, close out of it, close out of that. And then now you go back into terminal and you say pod install. And now it's going to go through and install those text field effects into your project. And also instead of working with an Xcode project, now you're going to be working with an Xcode workspace, which will be located inside of your text field right here. So as you can see, I'm completely done. So now that I have that all prepared, I can now go ahead and click text field XC workspace. It's going to load this up. It says going to uh, convert to current Swift syntax. Uh, basically what this is saying is this pod file loaded up isn't at the current Swift syntax, but it actually is. This is a very recent update. So we got to go ahead and say later, later. And then what it's rec it's not recognizing that it is the current version of Swift. So the way that we fix this is we go ahead and click on pods, then down here to targets and then click on text field effects. This is the one that was just recently added. So what we're going to do with this is go over here to our build settings and then go ahead and search for legacy. Now inside of legacy, you see use legacy Swift language version. And as you can see, it's unspecified right now. But what we're going to do here is set this to no. Legacy Swift version means it's the older version. So it's not using the older version. It's using the newer version. So we're just overriding whatever it was saying before that. So we're completely good to go with that now. Now the way that we work with all this is we need to go ahead and go into our main.storyboard here. All right, and now that we're inside of our main.storyboard, basically all that we need to do is add a text field. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a text field right onto the center of the screen, like so. And then now I'm just gonna go ahead and add the proper constraints. So from my text field to the view, I'm just gonna go ahead and say leading, trailing, center vertically and horizontally, and boom. There we have it. Now the next thing that I want to do is go ahead and apply those text field effects, which is actually very simple. So the, basically the way this works is we have down here inside of our pods, we have text field effects and we have Akira text field, Hoshi text field, all these text fields that you can add. And basically what all these are, are different classes that you can apply to your text field. It's actually really dead simple to add. So what we need to do is go over here to our main.storyboard and we're just gonna edit this one so that we can try out all these different text fields and see how they work and how we edit them accordingly. So the way that this works is I'm gonna go ahead and click on this, go over to my identity inspector, head over to the class, and just go ahead and type in Akira text field. And then it's gonna go ahead and apply those certain effects to it. It's gonna make sure that everything works. For the module right here, you wanna go ahead and switch that over to the text field effects module. And then that's gonna apply all of the effects to it. 
Uh, it automatically changed it at the start, but this time it didn't. So now you're just going to go in and switch it over manually. And there you have it. Now the next thing I want to do is go over here to my attributes inspector. And as you can see, this new part right here, Akira text field, has been added. So we can go ahead and change the border color if you want to, to whatever border color you want. And then also one last thing I wanted to do is go down here and you can see that it's a rounded rectangle. Just go ahead and click it so the border style is nothing. Then for the height here is I'm going to go ahead and change this to let's say 45 and then we want to go ahead and add a height constraint to this as well so that we can edit the height of our text field accordingly as well and as you can see it's not centered anymore so just go ahead and center that and I think that looks pretty good and as you can see with the Akira text field as you can see there is uh, it basically pops up so you'll notice that there's this little border at the top so this is how it is going to look when you build and run it. There has to be some spacing in between the top there. And then another thing you want to do is go over here and you can change the placeholder font. I'm going to go ahead and just switch that over to black. Why not? And then we can go down here to our placeholder text and I'm just going to go ahead and type in say first name here. And then now that is going to be my placeholder text. Now, as you can see, that text is a little bit small, so if you want to make that bigger, you can, but just keep in mind it's going to shrink the top of that as well. So you want to find a good balance uh, between text sizes. Now let's go ahead, build and run that, and let's see what we, what we have right here. And boom, here is our text field, so now we can go ahead and click on that. It pushes the first name here up to the top, and then you can start typing into whatever you want inside of there. And I think that looks pretty good. Um, again, that's just one of the styles that you can do, but I really like that idea of it sliding up with the placeholder text. Really nice looking. Now the other one that I've been dying to do is Kaide. So let's go ahead and try that one out. And again, it's very simple. So just go back over here, go to the class, and we're just gonna type in Kaide text field. It's gonna go ahead and update some values. Then we can go right back over here to our attributes inspector, go to the Kaide text field, go to the placeholder text, you can switch that to whatever you want. With your placeholder F right here, uh, generally you just don't want to mess with that, but it'll make uh, certain sizes bigger. You'll see that it just makes like the size of that font bigger, but it also just messes up with the positioning of things. So generally I just leave that blank and design it according to what we have on here. And then one thing that we don't have here is we have a foreground color. So this is going to be, as you can see, uh, we have a foreground color of, say, gray to start with. So I'm going to go ahead and take this and let's say add a dark gray foreground color like that. And with the placeholder font text right here, since we have a gray background, I'm just going to go ahead and switch that over to white. And now let's go ahead and build and run this and let's see what we got. And there is what that looks like. So you can see once I click on this, uh, it pushes it out of the way and it reveals the background. And you'll be able to type in that way. And then also one thing to note about all these text fields is once these objects move out of the way, if there's text inside of them, then they'll stay the way they are. But if there's not text in them, then it's going to go ahead and pop back to the way it was and when the keyboard or the text field is changed. So let's go ahead and see what that would look like. So I'm going to go ahead and let's go ahead and copy and paste this text field that we have right here. Let's just put this up here, add some constraints. And then now I'm going to go ahead and apply a different text field to this one. Uh, I'm going to try Yoko because it's like a 3D looking text field and I think it looks pretty cool. So I'm going to go ahead and type in Yoko text field. And now we should be able to go back over here to our attributes inspector and change the, uh, back, the text color, which is very important in this case. I'm going to go ahead and make that red for whatever reason. And the foreground color, you can change that to whatever font uh, color you want. And I think we're good to go. So let's go ahead and build and run this. Again, it's just a very quick and simple way to get an interesting look for each of your text fields. So go ahead and play around with this all you want because that's really all this is about. So here we have it. I'm gonna go ahead and click on first name here. And the animation is kind of wasted because we are using the simulator. Oh, actually there it is. But as you can see, as we switch from one text field to the, to the other, this is what Yoko looks like. And if we were to type in something here, and move to this one, it stays. Or if we were to type in something here, it would stay as well. Anyway, that's pretty much it for the framework. It's overall just something fun to play around with and hopefully it gives you a better look inside of your application.
Anyway, hopefully you guys enjoyed that tutorial. Uh, been a long time since I did my last video. Basically, I just went on a hiatus. Uh, I had some personal things to finish up on. Uh, my app is still in the works. Lots of things going on with that. Lots of progress made. But anyway, I am so pumped to for my app to finally be released in probably a month or two. Lots of things are going into this application and I'm super happy with it. But anyway, hopefully you guys enjoyed that tutorial. And if you did, be sure to check out Our Rescue, their Operation Underground Railroad. And basically their goal is to end human trafficking. It's something in this world that just shouldn't be around anymore. I will be volunteering my own hours, my own skills to this effort. But anyway, any way you can help them, it would be spectacular. Thanks for being awesome, and I will see you in the next one.